We're assembled here in the presence of God to join George and Jules in marriage, marriage which is instituted by God and regulated by His commandments, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and to be held in great honor among all men. Let's remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and the happiness of His people. By His Word, God has instructed those who enter into such a relationship to cherish a mutual love and respect, to bear with each other's weaknesses and problems, to comfort each other in their spiritual lives before God, and thereby to live together for the glory of God and to enjoy Him forever. God's design for the husband and the wife, clearly given in Ephesians chapter 5. There we read, Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all of her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought to also love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. Seeing the great benefits that God has prepared for the two of you who come together with your heart and intention, we pray now and we give thanks to God. Let's all pray together. Father in heaven, we say thank you for this union of George and Jules and your providence and how you have brought them to meet one another, to be interested in each other, and now to be in love with each other and believe fully and with great confidence that you have brought them to this place and that it is your heart and your will that they would become one. We thank you even before this marriage for the marriage that will exist that will be blessed of you. So God, we say thank you. We appreciate your goodness to bring this day. And we thank you in the great name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. 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 George, you will now publicly confirm the desire and the interest of your heart. So George, will you have Jules to be your wife? Will you pledge your faithfulness to Jules, seeking in all sincerity by God's grace that you will in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all patience and tenderness, Live with her and cherish her according to the principles and promises of God in the holy bonds of marriage. Will you? Absolutely, I will. And Jules, you now publicly confirm the desire and the intention of your heart. So Jules, will you have George to be your husband? Will you pledge your faithfulness to George, seeking in all sincerity by God's grace that you will in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all patience and tenderness, live with him, cherish him, and obey him according to the principles and promises of God in the holy bonds of marriage. Okay. Will you? Good. David Boy will come and lead, read from uh, God's Word out of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. George and Jules, you'll now take your vows to one another. 
It's upon these vows that you are married in the presence of God. Friends, family, they'll be here to witness, but the truth of it is, this is a vow you take before God and to Him, really. As you take your vows to one another, it's a time that you're able to say to Him, God, this is my heart intention. The same God who said, when you vow a vow before God, defer not to pay it, pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that you never vow a vow than that you would vow a vow and then not pay it. So this truly is the high and holy moment of this service. George, if you will, repeat after me. I, George, take you jewels. I, George, take you jewels. To be my wife. To be my wife. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in one. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. And Jules, you now take your vows to George, if you will. Repeat after me. I, Jules, take you, George. I, Jules, take you, George. To be my husband. To be my husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. And George, do you have a symbol of the covenant vows that you've taken on this day? I do. As you place this on her finger, you will be giving a sign to all, to you too certainly as a reminder, but to all who see that you have taken vows before our God. If you will, George, repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. In promise and in pledge. In promise and in pledge. Of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. And my abiding love. And my abiding love. Jules, do you have a sign of the covenant vows that you've taken? I do. Likewise, a reminder to you two and to all that you have taken these vows before your God. If you will repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. In promise and in pledge. In promise and in pledge. Of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. And my abiding love. And my abiding love. Once again, we turn to the Lord in prayer. This time, we make petition for this couple. You pray with me. Let's ask God to bless this marriage in a very unique and special way. Let's pray together. Our Father, we do now pray for great blessing on these two. We pray, our God, that you would give to them a joy in the relationship that they have that will be beyond any of their expectation, while at the same time, knowing that there will be challenges and problems and hardships, God, I pray that the joy of this marriage would overrule and outweigh anything Amen. that's a challenge in the relationship. I pray, Father, that you would let them go to you first in times of conflict. They might find themselves filled with your spirit, empowered by you to be able to relate well to one another and to love each other well. We pray, our Father, you would bless their place of dwelling at their home. It would be a place that not only would they enjoy one another, but others would enjoy the fellowship and company with them, and that they might be quick to point all to you who makes their life what it is. So we pray, God, bless their walk with you. We pray that they might find joy in you and each other. Bless them, we pray. And we ask this in the great name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Now by the authority committed unto me as a minister of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I hereby declare that George and Jules are now husband and wife. I declare it according to the word of Almighty God. I declare it in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, whom therefore God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. George is a new Christian husband here. I charge you. I charge you in a twofold manner. Very simple, but very important. I charge you bring to the relationship with Jules the love that this relationship requires. That means that you're going to show a love that is even the same kind, not to the same degree certainly, but the same kind of love that Christ has shown to his church. You actually become a model to the world around as they see husband loving wife in the Christian life. You'll do that by sacrificing on her behalf. You'll do it by means of protecting her. One of the things that she'll want probably more than anything else and need from you is to see that you appreciate her. Maybe a woman wants more than anything else just to be appreciated by her husband. Show that on an ongoing basis. Give her the attention that she needs. And let Jules know that you are more interested in her than you would be in yourself. Give her the love that she needs. Number two, I charge you to bring the leadership into the marriage that it so needs. Now when I say that, it has nothing to do with superiority. There'd be people here probably that have the idea that if, uh, if the husband's in the lead, that means you're superior. And no, not at all. Even as God the Father, God the Son, equal in power, substance, and glory. But we know that Jesus was in submission to the leadership of the Father and yet equal in every single way. Likewise, your equality, absolutely. You're the leader. But as you lead, you do it by loving her. And you do it in such a way that she sees that you're not ruling her. You're loving her in leadership. I charge you as you lead her, be an example, particularly in your convictions of life. You be a sincere worshiper. Let her see you as her leader before her God looking to him to determine how to lead her. That will bring security as you can never imagine. I charge you bring to the relationship an example of being a faithful disciple maker. Always be in the world with those that don't know the love of Christ and be pointing them to him in every way you know how in appropriate ways. And you be, and you've heard this plenty, you also be a very effective disciple trainer. Always be helping younger people of the faith grow strong in him. You do those things, she's going to see a leadership that's going to give her security as she has never imagined before. It will change her life for the better. You give her the love and leadership that she needs. Jules, as a new Christian wife, I charge you in a twofold manner. First, to bring to the relationship the respect that it needs. George, perhaps like you want to be appreciated, uh, he really wants to be respected. Give him the respect that he needs. You'll do that with a quiet spirit. The scriptures refer to quiet spirit, not how much you talk or how loud you talk. That's not it. It's actually not assuming the responsibilities that God never intended you to take, but rather had given to him. Don't assume them wrongly. You have that quiet spirit. Show a grateful spirit. Let him know that she, you're grateful to have him as your leader and lover. Let him know that. And as the great encourager of the relationship, you make him an excited man to come home when he does, that he knows he meets his bride. And let him look forward to that. So you show him respect. Even though sometimes he will not be respectful, you show him respect. Right. Lastly, I charge you, and this is a vulgar word to many of this world, but it's not according to the word of God. You submit. You submit to George. Has nothing to do with inferiority. In fact, Jesus is the great example, as we've already said. And by the way, the one that submits, as Jesus spent his life teaching, he says, those that submit shall be exalted. You look in a culture of Christianity, what happens to women, they're exalted. Who's the first one to be saying, let me carry the bags, let me put you on the rescue boat, because you are the one. You will be exalted in your submission. Keep that in mind, though, it has nothing to do with inferiority nothing whatsoever. You do that, 
to watch what God's going to do. So you respect and submit to George. What's going to happen as George fulfills his roles and you fulfill your roles, there's going to be a, a different marriage than most people are going to witness in the rest of the world. They're going to see you and they're going to say, something's different. you got something. What is it? And you'd be very quick to give all the glory to the Lord Jesus that makes it possible. And the truth of it is, willpower is not going to get you to do these things. It's going to be the work of Christ in your heart. As He indwells and He fills and empowers you every day, you keep going back to the cross of Jesus Christ. And remember, it's Him in you that enables you to be what each other needs. You'll have an unusual marriage, and the world will see it. You'll enjoy it, but they'll be blessed by you. May God bless you as Christian, husband, and wife. And now, may God's great benediction fall from heaven upon both of your lives. Now unto him that is able to keep you from stumbling, unto him who is able to present you faultless before his presence and with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God our Savior, to him in each of your lives, let there be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'll turn around. It's now my privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. George Fandor.